Well, good afternoon, everybody, or is it early evening? Um, as, uh, as I've just been introduced, I am actually the father of the bride. I'm Roger, um, and very pleased and proud to be so. And where does the time go? Uh, you know, it wasn't so long ago um, that, that Sue was giving birth, and in the heat of the moment, as Catherine emerged into the world, Sue said, what's the, what's the sex? I said, it's the expensive option. <laughs> <laughs> And how true that's, that's turned out to be. Um, of course, it might never have happened, might it? Um, it's just like Sue and I. We, we actually met in the last couple of weeks at university. That was a close call. Nearly got away with it. Um, <laughs> but, but she didn't. Um, uh, but, you know, Rich is such a great person, and it is so wonderful to have him as part of the family. And I see it so much less losing a daughter and so much more gaining a golf partner. <laughs> Perhaps a, a little more seriously, I think um, what I would say, and the only thing I would say, is, is life is a journey. You know, it's, uh, it's a long-term commitment, and if I can mix my metaphors, it's, it's not about the battles you win, it's about winning the peace. And that takes decades, <laughs> you know, uh, but I'm serious, and it is through those decades, it's all the shared experiences you have together as people that you can the build this huge sort of reservoir, I think, of, of love and, and bonded, bonding between you. So um, I just want to finish by saying, Catherine, Mum and I are immensely proud of you. All the things you've, you've done, how thoughtful, caring and kind you are, as all your friends have, have said, um, as well as being so committed and successful at work, and we just love you to bits. And in Richard, we know you found your soulmate and long-term partner and that's just absolutely fabulous. Catherine, as I take you to be my wife. Richard, as I take you to be my husband. I see these vows. Not as promises, but as privileges. To laugh with you. I get to run with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, in my dreams. I get to have you. Be the person. That I spend the rest of my life with. The rest of my life with. So yeah, I guess where do I start? Um, I want to say my wife and I, which first time I say that. Yeah, I just, I just want to say, well, we just both want to say thank you so much all for coming today. Like, you know, the, some of you guys have travelled far and wide. But, yeah, I guess the bottom line of this, we'd like to really thank, obviously, a special thank you to the parents um, for obviously getting us here today, first off. Um, and just always showing us that love and support um, and obviously making us into the people we are today. gentlemen, I'd uh, like to thank you all for coming today, especially those of you who know I'd be doing a speech. I'm honestly surprised you still, got, you still decided to turn up. Um, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Joe, <coughs> excuse me, the more competent half of Richard's best man duo. <laughs> When Richard asked me to be his best man, I felt honoured and had to say yes, although I must admit it didn't come as a shock. <laughs> So, the first time I met Richard Bunting, <laughs> through the sunset, came a man. And I say man, I could say specimen, because he was beautiful, he was tall, he was muscular, he was well-groomed, he looked like he'd be quite fast at running. All of these are fantastic traits for rugby. And we arrived at this game and, and someone introduced Richard, this is Richard, Fantastic, we've got Richard. He looks, look at him, he's beautiful. He'll be fantastic. We'll put him on the wing, it'll be brilliant, we'll be wonderful, it will be like Hartford. <laughs> if you're not from Hartfordshire, it's a wasted joke, but Hartford's lovely. Strongly recommend beautiful, beautiful river. I've known Richard for 13 years, although it feels like a lifetime. He was the first friendly face, grinning ear to ear, I saw when I started my new job at Tesco and our bond has grown stronger and stronger over the years. 
Um, I'll never forget when you said that I was like a brother to you and that will stay with me forever. I can't think of a better person in the world that I'd like to call my friend. Um, I love that guy, he's, he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy and he, he blesses the lives of people that he's involved with. He's been enormously fortunate to find Catherine and she's blessed his life uh, onwards from there. His commitment to Catherine is unbelievable. Uh, seeing the fear that's been in his eyes for the last 24 hours <laughs> reflects that. <laughs> But he is a wonderful, wonderful man and he'll make a wonderful, wonderful husband, I'm sure. Catherine, you're amazing. Not only are you beautiful, smart and far too good for Richard. <laughs> True. But you connect with him and deal with everything life throws at you. You're perfect for each other and I couldn't wish for a better person to be married to him. You shine together. I know Richard has been longing for this day. I've never seen him happier. Yeah, I guess onto the new Mrs. Bunting, or Mrs. Buncey as most of you probably know me. I think that you look absolutely beautiful today. Um, no words could describe the feelings that went through me when you walked down the aisle. I think it was fair to say I, I, I was quite speechless and on the verge of fainting. But that wasn't just because of you, I did feel hot. But I, yeah, you looked absolutely incredible. Um, I just want to pay testament to everything you've done to put today into motion. It's been absolutely amazing. I genuinely consider myself to be the luckiest man in the world, uh, marrying such a beautiful woman as yourself. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what the future's going to hold for us. Um, I think it's safe to say we've kind of opened the chapter now, and a second, third chapter in our book, and you know, I can't wait to see what the rest of the book's going to store for us. I was thinking of creative ways of wrapping up this speech. And I thought, I'm after, after three other speeches, everyone's going to be very bored. I'm looking at your faces now, there's a lot of people with chins in hands, which is always a good look for a speech, makes you feel very good. Um, and I looked at some of the, some of the literary figures that had, uh, that had lived or been around different places in the country that might be important to our wonderful, lovely, beautiful bride and groom. Uh, and I saw that Alfred Lord Tennyson actually was in there looking for a bit, which is, he doesn't know who, because he went to Barnwell and Stevens, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But some of you, some of you might know who Alfred Lord Tennyson is. Um, and some of the time, um, he spent in, in, in Epic Forest. Unfortunately, most of his poetry is morose and, and wouldn't have worked, so instead I spent last night writing a poem. Instead. So I'm going to give you this. The Stevenage boy met the Swallowfield girl and their lives were changed forever. Because love is such a powerful force, it did nothing but pull them together. With his infectious smile and her enormous heart, their joy a cascading treasure to the Stevenage boy and the Swallowfield girl in love forever. To our bride and groom, ladies and gentlemen.